My name is Danielle Dimitriou and I'm from the UK, from London initially, but I moved to Tokyo three years ago um, where I'm currently based as a freelance journalist. I'm doing a yoga program, it's the Personal Yoga Synergy program. Um, I've been doing yoga for a number of years. In Tokyo, I go to a studio probably about four to five times a week, work permitting. I think it's one of the few things that keeps me um, sane. I'm just looking to um, escape from the city for a week, really. It's, I love Tokyo, but it's very intense, and work is very intense. And it's just really um, restorative coming somewhere really beautiful like this and being able to do yoga, you know, in, a, in an open air shala and, you know, near the sea. Work has been quite stressful recently, so it, I was feeling um, in need of a break when I got on the plane in Tokyo yesterday. Yeah, feeling relaxed already. <laughs> just started. <laughs> I suppose it, it, the biggest thing is getting a balance. Uh, it's really hard when you're living in a city to get a balance between working hard and having good quality of life. Before we start, I just wanted to ask you if you had any goals or any aims while you're here. Um, I suppose I'd just like to completely relax for a week. I should probably try and kind of wind down a little bit. I first came to Kamalaya about 18 months ago um, and I was meeting my mother and two of my sisters um, and it was a lovely reunion with um, some of my favourite people. <laughs> and my father has also been here, he's a big fan of, of Kamalaya. I think for a long time he'd kind of gone on family holidays and he went, but he kept, came went on his own um, and really loved it and met lots of interesting people and um, definitely would like to come back again at some point. What I'm most looking forward to here, apart from the really yummy berry cocoa smoothies every day on tap, is <laughs> just relaxing generally and just um, not being shackled to a computer um, and the sea, swimming in the sea and having amazing massages and of course having one-to-one -one yoga classes with the lovely Anne. I have bought my laptop and my iPhone <laughs> but I think that's just so I can come here. Um, I think that's one of the perks of freelancing, it means you can be mobile um, and I'll just keep things ticking over. But I'm going to try not to do any work this week and see how it goes. So I'm on my third day, my third full day here. Um, I've just finished a drumming class and I'm about to go and have an Ayurvedic massage in my lower back. The yoga's going really well. Um, I started very energetically with um, sort of vinyasa flow class and I actually thought it's really good for me to slow down a little bit. So we've been doing some more gentle classes. It's quite difficult to remember the real world actually when you've been here for a few days. Um, you do automatically start relaxing. So I had the most sublime Indian head massage last night. I think they use lots and lots of coconut oil um, and it was just a really beautiful massage. So most days I've had a, a yoga class in the mornings and then a very relaxing treatment sort of late afternoon um, and I've been spending time at the beach in between and just reading. And, walking and just um, not doing anything really, which is quite unusual. One of my favourite treatments so far is the Katavasti, which I'd never even heard of before coming here. And it basically involves pouring warm oil into what I've been told is a donut shape, my lower back. So today is my last day. Um, I'll soon be going back into the real world, um, flying back to Tokyo this evening. And I'm feeling very relaxed. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm ready to leave yet. <laughs> yeah, I've definitely learnt a few things during the last week. Um, I've learnt that I don't always realise when I'm absolutely exhausted. Uh, I think when I arrived, I, physically my body was very tired and I didn't really realise I was kind of an autopilot. Um, and it's only when you slowly start stopping and slowing down and unravelling a little bit that you realise quite how tired you are. I've never been a very good sleeper. Um, I always sleep very much. And I've learnt that I probably don't get enough sleep or very good quality sleep. I think that's just really essential in terms of leading a healthy life. I've really enjoyed the yoga and it's been really um, a real treat because you can obviously um, dictate or, or kind of um, control the agenda, so to speak, so it's very tailor-made. I think what I've learnt in terms of the yoga is that I don't always need to do a really energetic kind of practice and sometimes it can be more beneficial for me to just do a very slow meditative practice. The biggest message was just uh, recognising my own 
limits knowing when to slow down and when to relax and to separate myself from work stresses and, um, and get a good night's sleep. I had experienced um, Ayurvedic treatments in India before, um, but I was really blown away by a lot of the Ayurvedic treatments here. The quality and the practitioners were amazing. They're, they're very warm and friendly, almost maternal. I had a few treatments that I'd never even heard of before. I'm definitely going to miss smoothies on tap <laughs> and all the coconuts and the food. It's really, really tasty. I love the fact that it's obviously ridiculously healthy and normally green, but it's almost always extremely tasty. My new favorite thing is a soup that actually looks slightly radioactive. It's bright green, clear liquid, but it's just delicious and obviously very good for you too. So I've actually bought the um, cookbook, so I'm gonna try and recreate some things at home. I'd love to come back. I think I'd probably do the yoga again, just because I really love yoga and it's a really nice balance between pampering um, with the treatments and the yoga. By complete coincidence, the Danny Paradise was here. Danny Paradise is a very good Ashtanga teacher. He's a bit of a legend in the yoga world. And it was amazing. I was so happy that my visit had coincided with him being here. It was such a treat um, to actually meet him and practice with him. It's a very inspiring teacher. It's really difficult to think of one, just one thing that is um, special about Kamalaya. I think it's, it might sound a bit cliche, but I think it's just a combination of, of everything, the whole package together, the food, the setting, the staff who are all amazing, <laughs> and, um, and the treatments. It is really beautiful here, and it, it does change a lot as well. I went on this amazing walk this morning just when the sea was miles away <laughs> and it was like walking through the desert. It was really beautiful. I definitely recommend it for people who are perhaps fearful of traveling on their own or don't really like that or a bit sort of put off by the idea of a, a retreat, so to speak. I met lots of interesting people. Um, it was really nice because I spent most of the daytime on my own, apart from the activities or talking to the therapists. Um, but in the evenings, it was really nice sitting at the community table and just having dinner randomly with different people, comparing notes on different treatments and trying different dishes <laughs> um, and just chatting to people from different places who are doing different exciting things with their lives. Um, so it was really nice having, having a mix of meeting people um, as well as time on your own. I, I think the yoga course is perfect for beginners um, because I think when you're first starting yoga that's the most crucial time because you're laying a foundation for your future practice. So if you can have one-to-one -one teaching um, at this kind of high quality level, I think that's the perfect way to start yoga. Even for people who are more experienced, again, it's a real treat and a real luxury to have someone, just one teacher, who can really target your, your weak points or, um, and just give you complete attention. So it's just, yeah, it's a real treat being able to, to tailor your, whatever level you are, your yoga practice.